Okay, so the six circular functions. So we have this circle in a plane and the center is at the origin. Then from the center to any point of the circle is the radius. Then if we draw a line perpendicular to this x-axis, so we have this right triangle x, y, and r. Then the angle of this triangle always with this x axis then if we going to pull out this right triangle so we have this triangle x y and r and this is our angle theta y is the opposite x is the adjacent and r is the hypotenuse then to solve for these six circular functions so we have this sine theta that's opposite over hypotenuse that's y over r Cosine theta, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, that's x over r. Tangent theta, it's opposite over adjacent, that's y over x. Cotangent theta, it's adjacent over opposite, x over y. Second theta, it's hypotenuse over adjacent, r over x. And the last one, this cosecant theta, it's hypotenuse over the opposite, that's r over y. So these are the six circular functions. Now, since this triangle is a right triangle, so to solve for the unknown side or the missing side, we're going to use this Pythagorean theorem. The C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Since our variables X, Y, and R, so we're going to use this formula to solve for the unknown side, that's r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Then r is always positive because r is the hypotenuse. So we have this uh, example. So if cosine theta is equal to negative 12 over 13 and cotangent theta is greater than 0, then find the values of the other circular function of theta. Now, from the given, we have this cosine theta and formula for cosine theta, that's x over r. Then we have this negative uh, 12 over 13. So, therefore, x is equal to 12 and r is 13. Now, since we have this uh, negative and this r is always positive, so, therefore, this negative is 12. Then y is unknown. So, to solve for y using this formula, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Then transpose this uh, x squared to the left. That becomes r squared minus x squared. That's equal to y squared. Then substitute the value of r. That's 13. Then for x, that's negative 12. Then this 13 squared, that's 169. And negative 12 squared, that's 144. Then 169 minus 144, it's 25. Then to solve for y, take the square root. So y now is positive and negative 5. Now, to solve for the sign of y, so we need to check if y is positive or y is negative. So from the given, we have this condition that cotangent theta is greater than 0. Since greater than 0, therefore, this cotangent theta is positive. Then in a plane, under quadrant 1, all functions positive. Under quadrant 2, only sine and cosecant positive. And in quadrant 3, only tangent and cotangent positive. In quadrant 4, only cosine and second positive. Again, cotangent theta is positive. So therefore, it's either on quadrant 1, because all functions positive, or in quadrant 3, because cotangent is positive in quadrant 3. Then from the given, since x is negative, and in quadrant 3, x 
is negative. So, therefore, theta is in quadrant 3. And in quadrant 3, y is negative. So, therefore, y is negative 5. Now, since we have now all three values, the x, the y, and the r, so we can solve now the remaining circular functions. So for sine theta, that's y over r, or that's negative 5 over 13. For tangent theta, that's y over x, that's negative 5, negative 12. Then this negative divided by negative, it's positive 5 over 12. For cotangent, that's x over y, that's negative 12 over negative 5, or negative divided by negative, that's positive 12 over 5. For second, that's r over x, that's 13 over negative 12, or negative 13 over 12. And the last one, the cosecant theta, that's r over y, it's uh, 13 over negative 5, or negative 13 over 5. So these are the remaining circular functions.